Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk all about a thing I both love and hate. Today it's time to talk about display boards. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique and learn it Vinci V. So every year Tom and I go to both the holy events in Chicago. So this is Holy Wars in the spring and Holy Havoc in the fall. These are team events run by Steve Herner, a really awesome guy who just has the most incredible tables you've ever played on. And for this event, because it's a, a, a doubles teams two-player event, uh, both Tom and I put together an army, a uh, thousand points each, and every year we have a ritual where we have to make a new display board. Some years one of us handle it, some years the other. This year we decided to have a little more fun and make it together. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how we made our display board and actually show you some of the footage of us creating it, what we're working on, and how we go about, you know, sort of getting to uh, a finished display board that's ready to go. And at the end, I'll show you how it all turned out. So uh, we're not going to head over the desk. Instead, we're going to head out to another part of my basement where we were working on it. Let's go check in and see how we're getting along. All right, Tom, what are we doing? Uh, we are building a board for Holy Havoc. Yeah, that's right. So what time is it? 2.04 in the morning. It is, in fact, 2 in the morning. Now, Tom, you did a lot of pre-work on this, right? Yep, everything you see. And uh, how much time have you say? would you say, just, just getting into this point where we have this, this board built, what did that take? Of, like, working hours? Yeah, sure. Probably 8 to 10 hours. Okay, so we're, let's call it 10 hours into this project already. And now we're just going to actually start all the painting and stuff like that and detail work. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of what is, like, there's a lot of, like, work a little bit, let it dry, work a little bit, let it dry. Yep. And we were just doing some last-minute touch-ups and fixes and things like that because nothing ever comes together exactly how you think it's going to. Nope. Nope. All right, well, uh, let's get this primed at 2 a.m. The key materials for this start are really uh, the most important sort of foundation of what you lay down. That's things like the pink foam, the dap, which is a sort of uh, spackling paste, um, and then the sort of indoor bark to do these rocks and build things up, as well as heavy cork and other elements like that. Now, I've linked all of those elements down below uh, with some Amazon links, uh, so that that way, if you're curious, you can find them. Um, and if you happen to pick any of them up, it does help support the channel and doesn't cost you anything extra. But those elements are how you sort of build up your initial, you know, ground and hills and space and rocks. All the natural terrain is done through a combination uh, of those elements. The bright side is most of those are pretty cheap and easy to get your hands on. From there, it then goes into the other elements you want to use. So that might be things like GW terrain uh, or trees you made yourself or even more rocks or, you know, whatever. He, uh, one of the most popular things that I always did when making display boards was hit up the pet store uh, and find cool like little uh, destroyed buildings and columns and little coliseums and stuff. Those things are incredibly cheap. They can be repainted over very easily uh, and they look great on your display board. They tend to be pseudo in scale. It doesn't really matter. Who knows what these ancient ruins are? And because they only usually cost a couple bucks each because they're just meant to sit in a fish tank, you can even do things like smash them with a hammer and break them up into even smaller ruins if you need to. Uh, so places like the pet store or the craft store are really a, a great place to find those additional elements on top of the things like the pink foam, the spackling paste for the ground, the indoor bark for the rocks, all those elements that are going to make the sort of base of your display board, this is the next step you build up from there. All right, so Tom, here's where we are. Yep. After priming, it sat overnight and uh, feels pretty good. What are we doing now? Uh, well, we have a couple cracks yep. that I didn't fill earlier. Mm -hmm. So we have some in the, uh, this is a print, by the way, from Anthony Castro, and who provided it for me longer ago than I want to admit. And um, it's a wonderful 3D print, but we need to put it to we. I put it together, but I didn't do crack filling before we primed, which was a mistake. But you know, it it really showed up, so we're gonna have to probably do that next. And then we also the sides of our thing broke off here; they yeah, got they fun. got loose, and now this is flappy. Yeah, it's foam core and spray paint. You know that happens. Sure. 
So now we have to clean stuff up, and then we uh, actually start painting. So Tom, how long do we actually have to finish this today? Um, I don't know, eight hours or so? Probably about eight hours, yeah. All right, well, let's see what we can do. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention 3D prints. So as you can see, we're working with that big castle. This is another uh, element of, uh, or another something that's really come into to its own recently um, in that 3D printers are becoming cheaper and more accessible and easier to use. So this big castle is a 3D print we got uh, and it's really great for this kind of thing. The nice part about printing, especially in this kind of scale, is you can really use any kind of print. It doesn't have to necessarily be resin, though it can be. Uh, generally, when you're dealing with terrain, it doesn't, and especially on a display board, it doesn't have to be the super finest, highest quality. And that's an important point to make. When you're working on and painting this thing, you're not going to be holding yourself to the standard of some individual 28 millimeter model. You want to make it look nice, and a lot of the ways we do that is through things like finishing and weathering and steps you'll see us attack later on. But when it really comes down to it, it's two feet by two feet by usually about two feet of space, depending on how much vertical uh, things you put into the display board. You're just not going to be able to paint that much surface area to the same level unless you want to take months on your display board. And frankly, most of the time it doesn't really make much of a difference. You need to treat this like a terrain project where you're relying on simple colors, simple highlights, and then doing a lot with like weathering and pigment and oil washes and just things like that to make it look gritty, grungy, and in the world it occupies. That's the best way to sort of uh, sell the illusion that this is a real place for your figures to then go stand out and hang out on. All right, so uh, let's see. We got we got all our base colors down here. Let's take a look. Yep. Gonna rotate it around. There we go. Give the spin. The sweet, sweet 360 shot. Absolutely. As you can see, we've managed to bust two of the side panels off, which Tom will have to fix later. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, what are we doing now? Hey, this is just an opportunity, because now I can burrow in and do LEDs. That's that's what he says he's going to do. We'll see, everybody, if that actually happens or not. Uh, so, okay, what are we doing now, Tom? What's our next steps? Uh, I think we're going to do some weathering, probably. Some mm -hmm. weathering and streaking. So we're going to play with some enamels. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think we should uh, transition to doing some of our our dry brushing and uh, the, some our probably do some more weathering first? Yeah, I think it's largely a lot of yeah. So it's we need to add some shadows. Yep. So that's gonna be some streaking grime on the building, stuff like that. Uh, that'll dry up fast enough, and then we've got to then it'll yes, it'll be a big dry brushing phase because we need to get rid of the castle itself. Is not going to be blue, so we <laughs> gotta we gotta you know actually desaturate it with everything but yeah that's our next steps all right cool let's get amongst it as i said weathering is one of the most important things you can do there's a lot to the the weathering um as you'll see us using here i, I do things like uh use a lot of pigments and a lot of oil paint washes and stuff like that um but beyond that just grabbing simple contrast paints and using the airbrush to apply what looks like staining or weathering all of that stuff can work and and be uh, just as valid of a way to weather. But rust, verdigris, uh, dry pigment for dirt and moss, getting out some dirty down products, anything like that is going to go a long way toward uh, making the place feel lived in and credible as a location in a real world. All right, Tom, how long have we been at this now today? Uh, I don't know. Six hours? Six hours, maybe. Okay, well, let's see how we're doing. I'm, I'm going to bring it in here a yeah. little bit. We're, we're how are we feeling? Yeah, I mean, we're making progress. Yeah, absolutely. Um, got some base coats down. Got some weather, or not weathering, but got some dry brush and pigments down. We learned that streaking grime doesn't come off these resin models with all this matte paint, with all the texture very well, easily. Not resin models, but yes, uh, printed uh, PVA. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, uh, that, was, that was a fun adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, we're making progress, at least. Uh, we still have some weathering to do. Uh, we need to uh, work on some of the depths here. Um, some of the shadows in the walkway. Um, and then we'll... Give me, give me a full spin around there. Uh, yep. And then we'll transition into some full weathering as well. Yep. Um, some verdigris. Gotta get some verdigris and stuff on all this metal pieces, yeah. Yeah, but it's coming along. I think we're, I think we're making good progress. Yeah. 
All right, six hours down, a couple hours to go. Let's see what we can do. All right, so here we are. Another, what, hour or two gone. Yeah. Uh, rotate me around, Tom. You can see we got some water effects in there now. The beach all touched up. Everything's weathered. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of use of pigments. Oh, we're missing trees. Where we are missing trees. That's fine. It's okay. They get it. They get yep. it. Yep. So, Tom... What is the importance of pigments in this kind of, like, display painting? Uh, it creates variation for us. So it creates what you might call, as you say, visual interest. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and so that it um, it distracts the eye and directs it around. It moves it mm -hmm. as you're looking at it. So, yeah, I mean, we used... A stupid amount of pigments. A lot of pigment. Yeah, it's very useful when you're making using display boards. Yeah. So there's where we are overall. Kind of move over top of it there. Yeah, we have some wave effects that we still want to do, maybe. Yeah, up next, fin final steps, some tufts, yeah. some wave effects, maybe a couple little touch-ups here and there. Uh, but yeah, pretty much we've got our, got our display board nice and ready. And then I'm going to do, on the other side of this, I'm going to do some LEDs and some, uh, um, some LEDs and some, yeah, some additional, and we'll do some finishing stuff in the next couple weeks. Well, I look forward to it. All right, let's bring it home. Lastly, water effects. So water effects is something we did do on this board, and it was actually really easy. Now, when I used to do resin pours and water effects, I would get traditional two-part epoxies, something like magic water, and you mix them together equally, and you pour it, and then you wait a day or two for it to really fully cure, maybe longer, depending on how deep it is. And it's very easy for it to get messy and for it to spill everywhere. <sighs> Frankly, it's pretty frustrating. That is until I discovered the beautiful... Uh, world of paste jewelry making. Yes, so paste jewelry or, or sort of fake jewelry uh, is made through UV curing resin. Now some game companies have recently come out with their own game branded versions of this stuff. You do not need to buy that. It is way too little for way too much money. This product has existed for years. All you need is a UV flashlight uh, and a bunch of this resin. Um, I've also linked that down in the description, uh, but this resin is much more jelly, gel-like. It has a higher viscosity, is that right? It's the one that flows less. Uh, and so, you know, it's more like molasses. And when you lay it down, you can really, like, just hit it with the light a little bit to slow its movement, then continue pouring it, then hit it with the light again, and then continue pouring it. It's very easy to work with. I actually have a recent video all about working with water effects and resin. You can go check that out if you want to see more on how to do these, uh, on how to work with the UV resin. But it is my go-to for all water effects. All right. It's all done, or at least as done as it's getting today. We've still got to fix the sides. Yep. All right, because those broke off. Yep. But that's no big deal. You can see we've got the waves down here. Let's, uh, let's... We'll need to resist. Got some crashing waves at our beach, at our hidden little thing there. You said you might do some lighting. Yeah. We'll fix the back and we'll clean up the sides and give it a finished feel. Yeah, it'll have, it'll need, like it'll get a new. We'll replace the panel that's on the side. Yep. Well, I'm gonna dig in and do some LED lighting mm -hmm. underneath for the cave. We got our little blood stains hidden in here. Those little what dark deeds have been done here. Mm -hmm. All right. And there we go. There's the... There's the sanitarium. Yep, the view from the actual front sort of entrance of the place. You're all right. Good. Yeah. Yeah, overall, not too bad, Tom. What would you think about this one? Yeah, I mean, it was a project less than 20 hours. It's pretty sure. Good. Not bad at all. Aspen, what do you think over there? How do you feel about it? What about these girls under here? Anything, girls? Lyra? Nothing. Okay. Well, they're tired, too. Everybody's tired. But hey... Thumbs up for the doggos. Absolutely. There we go. Uh, yeah, all in all, uh, pretty happy with how this came out. Tom, thank you for spending the time building it. Building it is always the honestly really annoying part. Uh, so I'm glad you were able to do that, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, uh, another board done. Another year, another board. <laughs> yeah, what's the lesson here? If you're going to build a board, have a friend. Yeah. Do this uh, as a yes. team. Do it as a team so you get to hang out and just talk instead of like staring at something and it feel because it doesn't feel like a momentous task when you're sharing the responsibilities. Absolutely. As always, 
uh, apes strong together. All right, cool. There we go. All done. We'll, we'll, we'll show some shots of it uh, when it's actually finished, finished, but... And maybe some models on it. Hey, there we go. There you go. The board's all done. Now I'm going to show you uh, some pictures of it and stuff like that. Uh, we did end up winning Best Display Board at Holy Havoc, so that was incredibly rewarding and awesome. Thank you to Steve uh, very much and the rest of the Holy Council who chose us as the Best Display Board. So that was very rewarding, certainly uh, after you know all the work that we put into it. And I'm very proud of this board and what we made. Uh, let's look at it. So here's you know the board and how it ended up looking with all of our models on it. Uh, and I think it, it came out pretty cool. All in all, uh, you can see that this, you know, sort of room, you can kind of see it in the background. Uh, this room is just full of amazing display boards. I really like how ours came out and how it finished, but there's a bunch of other awesome display boards in this room. Looking around, I was absolutely blown away by the displays from everybody. And one of the things I'll say is, though I often hate display boards, because once I'm done with the tournament, I don't know what to do with the thing. They're very hard to store and stuff like that. I will say, being at the tournament and looking at all the incredible displays that everybody made, looking at all this awesome art that was, that was there for me to sort of take in, with all these armies laid out on them, I have to say it was pretty darn cool. So darn it, display boards, you got me one more time. But there's ultimately how ours came out. Couldn't be happier with it. Thank you again to Steve. Uh, very happy uh, that we took home uh, the prize there for best display board. And as always, I want to say thank you very much for watching this. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got questions on display board or boards or anything hobby related, drop that down in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, as I mentioned, there's links to everything for the display board down in the description below. Those are Amazon links. Um, if you go click through those and then buy any of those products or anything else through the link, it helps support the channel and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to, there's also merch. Uh, we also publish games, myself with Uncle Adam as part of Snarling Badger Studios. You can find all the fun skirmish games we make down there. Uh, also, if you want to take your next step on your hobby journey, there's a Patreon down there as well, focused on review and feedback. We'd love to have you as part of the community, uh, so and I'd love to have you join. But as always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.